I want to talk to you about the difference between an objective gift and a state of being gift. Now, those sound like really difficult words, but they're not. Here's what it means. An objective gift is something that you can get, which you can either keep or give away or throw away or lose or whatever. A state of being gift is a gift that is given to you and it changes your state of being. It changes something fundamental about you. So let me give you an example. The difference between a diploma and a degree illustrates pretty well the difference between an objective gift and a state of being gift. So a diploma is an objective gift. It's an object. It's something that you can lose. And in fact, uh, I lost my diploma for my undergraduate degree for a number of years. It was in a drawer somewhere and I didn't know where it was. I lost it, but then I found it again later. So that was an objective, um, an, an, um, that was an objective, it wasn't a gift exactly, but it was, it was an object. Now my degree uh, is a little bit different. My degree is something that I received that changed my state of being. It meant that once I had it, I was a person who would always have that degree, an undergraduate in uh, Bible, psychology, and history, political science. So that was something that I couldn't lose. It was something about me. It was a state of being. Now, there's something that I think is important to mention about salvation. And I bring this up because I think a lot of people are confused about this. A lot of people seem to think that salvation is an objective gift. They'll agree that, yeah, salvation comes from Jesus, it's a gift, but they think it's an objective gift, which means it's something that is external to me, something that I can lose or give away or uh, abandon, you know, it's something like that. What they don't understand is, no, it's not an objective gift, it's a state of being gift. Jesus gives eternal life and it changes our essential state of being. The, something fundamental changes about us when we receive that gift. So it's not something external to me, it's not something that I can set down or leave behind, it's something that has changed about the internal working of who I am. Let me give you an example. I wrote down this, uh, this verse from John, which is really great, which illustrates this. It says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So what Jesus is saying here is that for those who have eternal life, something fundamental has changed about them. They will never perish. Said another way, they will never die. So what he's saying is those who have received eternal life in the present are immortal. They will live forever. So that's why it's so important to understand the difference between an objective gift and a state of being. Because if you think eternal life is an objective gift, something that you can leave behind or set down or walk away from, then you've misunderstood Jesus' promise. His promise is that your state of being will change. When you believe in him, your essence will live forever and it will be resurrected physically when he returns. That's what the Gospel of John tells us. Now, I think it's worth asking then, how do we get eternal life? A lot of people um, may have a lot of different answers, but Jesus tells us very clearly. He says it in John 6, 47. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. So the ones who believe in Jesus have everlasting life. That means they have it right now. Not someday, but they have it right now. So you see, this backs us into a corner to having, having to say that those who have had their fundamental nature changed, those who have uh, come alive, those who will live forever by Jesus' promise, they will never change that. That can't change. So if I have eternal life right now because I believed in Jesus at some point in the past, that means that I will live forever. So what does that mean for you? It means the same thing. It means that if you haven't believed in Jesus for everlasting life, you can do that like right now. You can believe in him for everlasting life. A lot of people have believed in Jesus uh, for a lot of different things, for health or wealth or you know, uh, who knows what. But have they believed in him for everlasting life? I'd say a lot have, but I'd say also there are a lot of people that believe things about Jesus that have not believed in him for everlasting life. So that's an essential thing, that you believe in him 
for that complete spiritual change, that you believe in him to be born again, as he says in one place, that you believe in him so that you can have everlasting life. Maybe you're a person who has believed in Jesus for everlasting life, but at some point you got confused about what it means. Well, here's what it means. If you've believed in Jesus for everlasting life at some point in your past, you still have it. It doesn't matter if you're disobedient. It doesn't matter even if you're an atheist now. If you believed in Jesus for everlasting life at some point in your past, you still have it, and you can't lose it. So I think there's some of you out there that wish you could lose it because you kind of decided you want to go back on that decision. But, but if you believed in Jesus for everlasting life, you're going to live forever, and you're going to live forever with him. So it's a beautiful promise, and he promises that nobody can snatch that out of our hands, once, out of his hands once he, uh, we have it. So that's the difference between an objective gift and a state of being gift.